I mean, Richard brought, the, brought up the idea of, of uh, type replacements, and this has also been discussed a little bit by other people. I guess I want to put the, the panel on the spot and ask them, maybe even first of all with a show of hands, who thinks that with the bivalent or quadrivalent vaccine there will be type replacement? And then we'll let people explain why they think that. Who thinks that there will be type replacement? Who th <laughs> I thought we'd have some controversy here. So nobody, nobody thinks that there will be type replacement. Can somebody explain why they think there will not be type replacement? <laughs> Susanna. Well, I guess we believe Is this on? that it's a pretty stable virus, uh, so we don't anticipate um, type replacement. But then again, in medicine, if we don't look, we won't find. And certainly in the vaccine effectiveness studies that I um, described, we will be looking for it. And also, they don't seem to compete with one another. There, there's, there, there seems to be cooperation rather than competition. So I, I think both, both, both of these reasons. And uh, yeah. any, anyone yeah. else? Joachim? Yo okay. No, I was going to say exactly the same thing, that, that even with rather large studies looking at whether the different types compete with each other, we can't see such a phenomenon. So. so uh, if, if there is no competition, there is no theoretical basis for a type replacement. Can I? Okay, we have a question here, please. Yeah, just a question about the difference between CIN2 and CIN3. Uh, can, it, can you hear me? Now, since CIN2 is not such a good lesion to consider as an endpoint, primarily because at this age, almost 60 or 62 percent of these lesions will regress spontaneously. And as Tom Wright will tell us, you, you put 10 pathologists and show them CIN2, they probably will not agree. But if you put CIN3, probably the majority will agree on the CIN3. So why shouldn't we consider this as really the endpoint that should be better evaluated between the trial and still stick on the CIN2 and you know just mm -hmm. disregard the CIN3, which is, I think, a more serious lesion that should be considered, and I think he alluded to. If I can just repeat the question, to, to paraphrase, the idea is, is why, why use CIN2 slash 3? Why not just use CIN3? Because it's, it's, a, it's a much more hard endpoint. There's more agreement, and it's clearly a, a, a cancer precursor. Again, I'm just going to reiterate, in our vaccine effectiveness studies, our endpoint is CIN3. We debated it for a long time for the reasons you say, but the histopathologists agreed we're looking at CIN3 in vaccine eligible age women. And I think if I can add something, one of the important um, contributions of the end of study analyses of both Gardasil and Cervarex is they actually did have CIN3 separately as an endpoint and there were fairly good confidence intervals for CIN3. Now 2-3 was taken because that's what the regulators required. Okay, so that was a regulatory decision. But there is good data for both vaccines for CIN3 as a hard endpoint in the final analysis, although not in, in the intermediate analysis that was used for licensure. And I don't think you were referring specifically to the alternative dose uh, evaluation, but we've, we uh, sort of ethically can't be offering girls, because th these girls wouldn't actually fall under our cervical cancer screening guidelines, because all of them are well under the age of 21. So that's why we're doing uh, self-collected vaginal specimens. Bill. I just wanted to weigh in on the type replacement. Um, and it's some, actually something John and I talked about many years ago, which is in the worst case scenario, Let's imagine that there's a huge type replacement. We're talking about much weaker carcinogens. Exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. the overall impact, even in the worst case scenario, is going to be extremely minor. Yeah. I think it, just, just to expand on that a little bit, maybe people don't realize it, that cancer is a dead end for the virus as much as it is for us because these cells are too differentiated, too de-differentiated to make virient particles. So the virus isn't trying to rapidly evolve to cause cancer. Okay, it doesn't want to do that. So we, we don't expect that the, 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 not, the less carcinogenic types than 16 and 18 will rapidly evolve to become more carcinogenic because that's not what the virus wants to do. So thank you. Other questions? Um, one thing I was going to ask Gina is, have you guys looked at um, cross-reactive antibodies, cross-type reactive antibodies? Because 
what, what we've seen in Costa Rica is that with two doses, although there was at zero in one month, you know, or two months, it wasn't in zero in, in six months, we didn't see cross reactive antibodies, we just saw type specific. So I wonder if, if you're planning to look at yeah, that. Yeah, uh, in that very bad slide that was completely jam packed with a whole bunch of objectives, that is one of them. Yeah, is there Did a secondary you see objective? Cross we, we haven't, we haven't, uh, we've only looked for the primary uh, endpoints right now with the, the preliminary two and three okay. dose, but we we have those specimens and I'm looking at Al, Saw. Okay, so you are going to analyze he that. Knows, yeah. so it could be he important. knows our questions. Okay.